Front. Oh, we. <laughs> hey, how you doing? We are live. <laughs> How's everybody? Ah, uh, so welcome back, buddy. I apologize in advance. So I, I messed up, Yang. It's all my fault. No, no, it's good. Welcome everyone. Uh, we are back again. John's long box. One of our favorite guests here, oh, and uh, today John is joining the ranks. Or very soon, John will join the ranks of people crowdfunding comics. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun, and I'm getting nervous, and the pressure is starting to build. I, I wanted to say this. This made my day. This was really sweet. Tome of Reckoning. I got these comics mm -hmm. today. They were on my oh, stoop. Oh, nice. Home. Just gorgeous looking. I, You know, just gorgeous looking. Wow. This, he put this little post-it note on the comic. I don't know if you could see it, um, but it says, thank you, John. Here's to a successful heroic tales. Oh, that's nice. I, I, you know, I got to say, I, 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 maybe because I was very hungry, but I got very emotional. I was like, oh, man, this this, this, uh, this crowdfunding pe group of people, it's sweetest people. So nice. Everybody's so helpful. Oh, good. Yeah. I think my face is that big. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, because I, I started you know, just doing a YouTube channel about three mm -hmm. or three years ago. And I had no intentions of it, of making a comic book or, or, or talking to people. It was just me picking up a comic book, talking about it. And hopefully I'd, I'd get a couple of comments. That's really all I imagined. And next thing you know, I'm, you know, I, I, I got guests coming on the show and then I'm making a comic. And then I was just like, all right, I'm going to make a comic. I went and hired an artist and I write the script and I'm doing it. And then people are like, Oh, so who's doing your, uh, uh, your your your, your uh, print files and like what, what what do you mean by this? What what do you what about distribute? What what do you mean by this? And I was like, oh my god, I just I just bit off more than I could chew. I don't know what I'm doing. Like there's steps that I didn't know were steps. So I've been reaching out to a whole bunch of other successful people. You know you know we I'd have them on my channel. We talk and then after after the they're like this. You got to do this. Talk to this guy. This guy's good. This you know who's who, what about your logos? Oh yeah, I gotta get logos for my talk to this guy. You know, what I mean? and, and next thing you know, so issue two like is gonna go off like clockwork. So I, I, I was, I was joking, and then I realized it's not a joke. I, I assembled the Avengers of comic book making. I got such a great team of people. You know, I, I okay, can we do this? You got it. Boom. Within six hours, every problem is fixed. And let me be awesome. totally honest, I'm the problem. I'm, 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 I'm the <laughs> amateur of this group of people. So, <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited. I'm excited. So yes, um, to your question. Yes, I'm entering the ranks of crowdfunding. I was up a long-winded answer. <laughs> so uh, you've you've got your uh, you've assembled your Avengers of comics. Uh, what would you say uh, that you've other than like oh crap I need someone to you know prep the files for print and this and that like what just in terms of um, you know having to deal with people who work in the arts. Uh, versus your normal job, which is, you know, in the trades, like yeah. how, how has it been uh, the same or different in, in working with people? Well, every job I went to the foreman is a grouchy old bastard. I'll just be blunt and, and, and everybody hates it, but I'll, we're our own. We make them that way. You know what I mean? Guys are sneaking mm -hmm. out early. Guys are drunk. That guys aren't coming in. You know what I mean? So like, so the foreman's always just come out swinging and up. and I said, but I I, I don't want to be like that. I, I I don't like being the grouchy old guy. This is supposed to be fun. We're making comic books. You know, this is supposed to be a a fun thing. So I just swore to myself I was never going to be mean. I was never going to be bossy, and uh, it never even came up. I feel like I'm talking to buddies. Like I, you know, I, I got oh, Reggie nice. Rodriguez uh, doing the art, and he is like like like. When I get a message from him, I I, I I joke that it glows because he is like a saint. He's the nicest, sweetest guy. He's smiling. He's positive. Like every time we talk, he's like, this is so much fun. This this is great. This is – I can't – this is exciting. Oh, wow, you want me to draw that? This is cool. You know, so uh, – and uh, I, 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 I'm not an artist, so like the very few changes that I asked for because he, you know, he, 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 he wanted some details on in every panel. So, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, so maybe I went a little overboard with details, but he said he liked it that way because he said there's so many times where, you know, he also, 
English is not his first language, that oh yeah, it's an inordinate time fixing things because of miscommunications. And you know, when you're trying to do a page a day every couple of days, that's 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 money out of your pocket. Yeah. So I never wanted to mess with with, with with so I gave I err on the side of communication. So I gave as much details as I possibly could. And the few and again, any any changes that I asked for was on me. I'm like, oh, this is a better way to do that. So can we do this? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. I'm like, okay, uh, what, you know, I'm paying you for another. No, no, I, I fixed it. I fixed it. Or like, so I guess it's what to do with layering when you're doing digital artwork. He can take uh -huh. something. So, you know what I mean? So I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. sitting there with the piece of paper and he has to erase everything or crumble it all up. You know what I mean? So everything like that. Uh, the coloring, I kind of just gave a couple of vague, this is during the day. You know, this guy's a white guy. This guy's a black guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, and you know they also have the script but uh the only mistakes in in the coloring the colors picked up later on he's like oh yeah this was all daylight and then there was like a large gap and then when he went back he started calling because this should have been daylight also and i i didn't even pick that up you know what i mean so he, mm. he that, but that's that's nothing you know what i mean he, he the color he just i guess deleted a file and inserted another file but so that that's the extent of like corrections but no, nothing major, and it's funny because the only corrections that are or or or, or uh, things that are making things low is I keep having ideas to make the comic bigger. It was originally just gonna be a two a twenty two page story with like mm -hmm. a letters page, but there's gonna be no letters, so it's gonna be you know the in the old Marvels when you got the first issue, welcome true believers. I yeah, had yeah, this yeah. idea, so that's what that was. Is, and then I was like, Let, let's do a backup. I'll, you know, a backup would be fun about a villain. So we'll do the 22 pages of the superhero, the patriarch, and then there's going to be the origin of one of the bad guys. The suit is his name. He'll be the bad guy. And then I'm going to put a couple of pages of mock ads. And then I was like, you know what? How about like a two page spread of a map of, of, of the city of science city where everything. So it's, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And then uh, friends were like, well, how much are you going to charge for this? You know? And I was like, me and my enthusiasm and naivety i didn't even think of that and i just said i i cannot in good conscience charge more than ten dollars you know what i mean i i just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I, I just said ten dollars if i take a loss i take a loss you know wow. but i'm confident that everyone's like you're gonna get all this for ten dollars you know maybe not in the first campaign but you're gonna see other people like look at this this was this was one of the cheapest crowdfunding comics and look at this you know so maybe by issue, because I'll, I'll overprint, you know, and I'll have some, maybe by issue two, the people will pick up one and two bundles and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So, you know, because I've already had people going, is that a misprint? It's 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 $10. $10. Comic books shouldn't be expensive. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, that's what the Iconics guys did with uh, at least uh, Tim Lim and uh, Mark Pellegrini with uh, Common America, is they were charging about 10. I'm not quite sure what the, next one's going to be, but they were charging 10 bucks per issue. And that really helped them to, to oh, sort of get so. over the hump, you know? Cause I think there's a lot of people who are like Ooh, $25 and yeah, $5 and ship. And that's a lot. And I'm a lunatic and I buy comic books all the time. You know, I buy every day, you know, I come home and there's a comic crowdfunded comic on the porch, you know, and my wife's like another comic book, you know, and I, I but I love, I love comics if that's not obvious, but I, I don't want, I, I just feel like it shouldn't be. I'm not going to mention names, but paying $35 for a comic book is ridiculous. I don't care what it is. You call it a graphic novel all you want. It's a comic book. You know what I mean? Like it, it shouldn't be that much money. And again, like uh cyber frog, I paid $25, but mm -hmm. I didn't mind. Cause I got this metallic cover, you know, and it came with a couple extra things. It, it came with this, this figure right above my head. Mm -hmm. So to me, that was, but I, I, I don't have the connections to make toys. Maybe hopefully down the line, and then I could justify twenty five dollars. But I'm I'm a comic book. Um, there's a there's a pint glass, but that's an add on. You don't have to buy this. You know, mm -hmm. that's and I got a coin that uh, I got, I got made up that I'm gonna put in everybody's. Uh, so you're gonna have like a little wow. Method, uh, uh, what do they call them? A challenge coin. It, mm -hmm. You know, real simple. Nothing nothing crazy. Because I. It's, it's it's fun. I was trying to make a T-shirt. I was I was telling you before we went live that this this woman was designing my T-shirt, designing my T-shirt for three weeks, every day, emails, every day, emails, and then she's like, "Can you come in?" 
So I was a little bit late because I had to go talk to the t-shirt lady. She's around the block from me. I'm trying to use a, a local place. And, you know, I wanted the patriarch's like triangle with the wreath and everything like that to look like, to look like I'm the patriarch putting on a shirt. You know what I mean? And all it was, was a purple shirt with a little square over here of, of, of the truck. I was like, that's, that's not what I want. Actually, it was a white shirt because I, I was going to have purple printed on the white. I was like, oh, cool. I was like, come on. And, and she's like, well, here's your money back. I, I can't do what you want. I was like, all right. So, so that, that was a setback, but that, that's, I just wanted to wear one mock up shirt in all my promotional videos. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, but. but anyway. That's all right. You'll, you'll get there. Says, does think that a twenty-five dollar comic should be forty-eight pages or over? Uh, yes, I would say a lot over. <laughs> a lot. I would say a lot over too. But mine's not going to be forty-eight pages. You know, like I said, mine's mm -hmm. probably because uh, because I'm still waiting for a couple of people to do like a little one-page pin-up stuff. So mm -hmm. depending on uh, you know, what I get back. So it's it's going to be it's going to be about thirty-five pages for ten dollars. Well, that's not bad. That's yeah. not bad at all. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that would put it more or less in line with uh, what the big two are charging for a floppy. Like if you if you went from, you know, the normal like 22 pages to 35, that's about the right price. Yeah, I, I you know, I want to put a, a letters page. You know, I was asking a couple of my friends who read the scripts if they would write write letters. Uh, you know, I, I'm like I said, a couple of couple of ads, you know, not, don't mm -hmm. worry. It's not ads for like Nike or anything like that. You, you, you'll, you'll get it like old, you're going to recognize it. Like, Oh, like, I don't want to ruin glasses the, and uh... yeah, I don't want to ruin the joke, but you, 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 you'll get it. And then, uh, and then I want to do, uh, like in the middle of the comic that said, like, you remember when you got like the blueprints of, 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 of the Baxter building mm -hmm. or a map of Manhattan and you know, where Spider-Man lives and Dr. Strange is saying, so I want to make, a map of 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 the the city is called Science City. Uh, the the premise of the comic is it's it's set in Science City, and Science City was the marvel of the modern world. Like it's eco friendly and it's all this and it's mm -hmm. right outside of Yuma, Arizona. Because I, I read someplace that you could build like a a, a solar panel farm in Arizona mm. that would gather enough power to to feed the United States. I don't know if that's true or not, but I was like that would be cool to make like a city out there. Cause I've been through the deserts of Yuma, Arizona. There's nobody there, you know? Yeah. So it's just, so like, what if they just built the city and every skyscraper with solar panels and, you know, they, they would put up like, like lamp posts with solar panel, you know? And I was like, they have mm -hmm. the moving sidewalks. And so I was like, that's where, that's where superheroes would live, you know? And then I came, so the city came first. So the, every, every issue is going to feature a different superhero of science city. And then the team will be formed and then it, after the team is going to form, I'm going to go back and revisit some of the other characters. But I also want to do like the 22 page story and then the backup. Cause I, I, I have a feeling people are going to really like the patriarch and I don't want them to feel gypped when they get issue two and it's not the patriarch. So I was thinking mm -hmm. of maybe the backups doing like a, a villain, but then the villain will be facing the patriarch. You know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. And then so so then in this one is it the main story is the patriarch and then the backup story will also it's, feature it's called, the patriarch? No, the 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 the, the main story is called Daddy's Home. It's the patriarch. Mm -hmm. he, he's a father, superhero, you know, husband, and it's him. He just wants to go home. He wants to go home to his kids. You know, he's like it. This is his job. His superhero life is his job, and he he's just trying to get home. And all these things are preventing him from getting home. You know, so when he finally gets home, daddy's home. And then you see that back cover where he's holding his babies and everything like that. That's his reward for being a superior. He, he wants oh. to get home. And comic book craziness happens on the way home. The, the backup story is a, there's a, there's a, every comic book character has the evil politician, the evil businessman, the evil religious leader. You know, I, I do have mm -hmm. the evil general, but he's not going to be showing up for a while. So I have all the, those staples. So this is introducing the, the evil politician because all politicians nice. are evil. So this is his origin. So uh, by the time Heroic Tales comes out, it's set in real time. So it's 2024. Oh, okay. But this, this will be 1999 when Lucius Kane is a, is a youngin. So he's he. This is him, young, idealistic, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. He's getting a job in the mayor's office at Detroit. You know, so he's 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 a good guy at this point. And then by the time 2024, he's the most corrupt, 
piece of crap politician you've you've ever seen. You know, so and then then the the guy who actually built Science City, Philip Manning, he's the he's the Lex Luthor. He's the corrupt industrialist. He's the evil. Oh. Character. Comic books. So the evil mayor teamed up with the evil industrial, and, and they. Uh, now, now you get me to a to, to geek out <laughs> on my city. But the whole concept of the city is there was an architect, Eon Strange, mm -hmm. Ian Strange, who was a play of of the H.P. Lovecraft Strange Eons. Mm -hmm. You know, they die. You know, so Ian Ian Strange is this bizarre person. They don't realize he's a magician, and he's using magic and architecture to create cities that will generate peace and unity and all of the stuff that all these utopians think. But so he, he gets it. Nobody will fund him. Philip Manning takes these plans. Oh, you know, if we, if we connect on the Lee lines and, you know, the solar spots of this equator, and we start to break ground on this particular day of the year, we will create this. So the whole blueprint of the city is actually a sigil for a magic spell. But, Ooh. but the industrialist didn't do it right. He scrimped. He saved. He did this. <laughs> the spire in the middle of the city that that all that focus like you, you see the Vatican. They have that like those the laurel wreaths and they have the spire mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's channeling all the magic energy. If you listen to the conspiracy people, that's what the city was supposed to do. It's two ovals with the spire in the city. The the female and the male aspects kept, makes this spell. But instead of the spire, he put. A statue of himself, like a replica of the Colossus of Rhodes. So you'll see that ever present in the background of the comic. And so all the energy is getting collected and dispersed, and the frequencies are changed. So people are going crazy. So now people are putting on costumes and becoming super villains. You know, like there's a guy, Boss Moxie. He's now a 30s gangster guy. Come on, see, hmm. I'm going to rob the bank. Why? Because the city itself is causing the craziness. But who's going to believe Ian Strange, who doesn't even live in this time. He's a magician. He travels where he needs to be, you know. So when he comes back to check on the progress of the city, he's going to be pretty pretty miffed, you know, to find out that it's it's a nightmare. So, you know, you've mentioned a lot of different sort of uh, classic comic tropes and yeah. you're trying to give it a classic comic feel. What is it about that sort of old-timey feel that sort of hits you in the sweet spot? Uh, well, let's be realistic. You know, I was a kid in the 80s when I was reading all these mm -hmm. wonderful comics, you know, so that's going to, you know, that's going to play a big part of it. You know what I mean? We all we all love the music that we listened to when we were teenagers. We love the comic books. We love the movies. You know, everybody loves their first girlfriend, your first car. So all of these comics that came out when, I, in the, they, but also they were great. The Jim Shooter era, you know. Yeah. Phoenix, you know, the, the, the dark, the great darkness out of the Legion Superior, the, the, the first 50 or so issues of New Teen Titans, the John Byrne Fantastic Four. These were great comics. And and it was hopeful. And and the superheroes were good guys. They were they were unquestionably the good guys. They were they had moments of doubt because without flaws, then whatever. That they, they're no, they're not interesting. But they're not the homelander. They're not jerks you know they're not evil mm -hmm. they're not pretending the, the, like i keep saying the patriarch is a husband and a father he, he's he's a dedicated husband he's not playing around and that's another trope that i'm playing with if you ever read the spirit or the early captain marvels you know billy bats and shazam the girls always threw themselves at the hero and the hero was mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and it was always a little weird to me that the spirit was running away from ellen dolan and san sarif and then going to hang out with the 10 year old boy but you know, <laughs> so I, I have a reason for that. So the, the girl villains are always throwing themselves at the patriarch because he's this, you know, distinguished man with the beard. No, mm -hmm, no, it is mm -hmm. not my self-insert. I will tell you right now, you'll meet my self-insert in issue three, Augie Carmichael. Oh. That's my mm -hmm. self-insert. The patriarch just happened. He's actually my father's insert. You know, my dad had seven kids. But anyway, he the women are throwing themselves at him, but he's happily married. So that's, he's like, thank you, but I'm spoken for. But it's it's complicated because because I, I I can't get well I don't want to get into it but he just says no and he doesn't say I'm happily married because in a later issue you're gonna find out that his family was threatened and oh you know what I mean so he the family hides you know he's it's superior all the superhero trope well come after your family like how many times did Aunt May get thrown off a building you know <laughs> yeah I mean? he's he's got infants that he has to take care of so. You know, so when the women throw themselves, he's like, no, you know, I, and, and then um, like, 
So does the patriarch? Out. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Does the patriarch like being a superhero? Yes, he likes it. He 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 is a good guy. He was a good guy before he got his powers. He was an EMT. Um, the first issue, I'm not doing his origin. Mm -hmm. um, I started writing the script for the first issue, and my main feedback was, this is too much world building, not enough character. And I was all ex excited about that. And then I realized you, they were right. Like, who cares about the world if you don't like the people in it, you know, when it comes to living? Yeah. So I purposely toned everything down. Uh, like, it, it's it's getting your toes wet. I, I'm already anticipating the biggest criticism for my comic was going to be, oh, it was small stakes. Yes. Because if you come out with Galactus, where do you go from there? Yeah, Augie Carmichael. Um, you know, you're closer than you think, Nick. Uh, Nick knows nothing about Augie Carmichael, but uh, Nick is wonderfully, uh, uh, pr what's the word, prescient? Pres prescient? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, so when you when you remember that comment in uh, when i get to issue 3 well you won't even realize what his superpower is in issue 3 you'll you'll what uh i think around issue 6 you'll actually see what his superpower is and nick you're closer than you think <laughs> nick ogie call michael's a big fat slob so yes <laughs> but uh, um uh, well, I, no, I distracted myself, but uh, <laughs> it's all right. So uh, I was going to ask, you know, you've got a lot of emphasis on like classic comics and whatnot. How do you, how do you sort of um, get younger people interested in something like this where, you know, it's not something they've had before. Like right. they've had uh, Hellfire Gala and Thrupples and, morally questionable heroes for a long time aren't reading those. yeah <laughs> they're reading the, manga those, those are for 35 and up you know name a kid that's been reading the x-men comics you know my my comic is all ages and when i say mm -hmm. all ages the first thing people go is oh it's kitty comic no it's not all ages is, is star wars is all ages the chronicles yep. of Narnia was all ages. lord of the rings was all ages you know uh you know, Lion, the Witch, in the Wardrobe. I already said that. It was Wizard of Oz is all ages. You know, mm -hmm. Harry Potter. You know, Harry Potter is all ages, but it, it starts out young and then it, it, yeah. it gets more mature as it goes along, which I thought was brilliant. It aged up with the readers. It was brilliant. So that's what I want to do. It's all ages. Now, yeah. I, I don't know your age. I assume you're younger than me. Everybody is. But you're going to like this. But if you it's have like, kids, I, I do, do you have kids? Not that I know of. Okay. Why? Who have you been talking to, John? Well, you know, I can Nick oh. X, who's wonderfully prescient, oh, told me a thing or two. No, okay, but uh, all right. you, you you could share this comic yeah. with, with, with kids. Now, like I said, the first issue is getting your feet wet into the my, my universe. The second issue is is you know I I, I come out swinging, and then the third issue it's going to be almost a full on horror comic. It's going to show you like hmm. my interpretation of why I don't like these deconstructed nasty superheroes you know it, it, it like there's going to be a a, a a a street level dark avenger kind of hero who you as a as a citizen of of he does live in science city but if he, he's, he lives in new york if in new york you're scared of him even if you're the good guy you know even if you're walking down the mm -hmm. street you know and that's no way to be a superhero so that's what i want to and then after that, I, I got some. I can't wait to tell some of these stories. I I I I I think I can write horror. I I I'm, I'm going to write like some sad stories of superheroes. But I'm trying my best to make a, a humorous issue. And I got to say, humor is the hardest thing to write. You know? So I I got a whole I got humor script, and I haven't shown it to anybody because it's it's excruciating. You know when a joke doesn't work. Um, yeah, Marcus says it, but oh. Uh, I, I so where was I go? So I, I started out. I built my world through a role playing game. I play a game called Villains and Vigilantes. I think we talked about this before. It's mm -hmm. a superhero role playing game. Came out in 1982, and I've been playing that since 1982 with the same people. Matter of fact, I'll give a shout out on Kickstarter right now. There's a there's a, a comic, uh, Thunder Zone Comics, one of which is oh. called Marshall Strong. That's my friend Mike. He wrote inside the comic. He goes, "Don't tell John, but this is really his comic because it's a, his character was Marshall Strong, in a story that I made up, and he loved that story so much, he wrote it down as a comic book script and made a comic book." So I'm oh, like, "Oh, cool!" 
That's that's my so my first comic is coming out, and I didn't even write it. You know, and Marshall Strong is a character in in my. He's like the Nick Fury, Captain America amalgamation mm-hmm. in, in in my world. So uh, it just I I just think it, so I wanted to give him a shout out. So there is, a, it, it's not the same universe because we didn't we didn't check the uh, the script. So there's it's it's not going to jive, but it's it's just fun. Mm. It's fun to do. Um, the yeah. shout outs to other creators that I really like. Uh, you know, if if you're a fan of Horace H. Hoover, you'll like my comic. You'll be surprised. If you like Wolf and Batsy, you'll be surprised. That's all I want to say. <laughs> uh, so there's there's some there's some fun. Uh, it's not a shared universe, but there's there's some there's some nods to other other people who've been instrumental in helping me get this comic book to to uh, to crowdfunding. Nice. So we see the patriarchs kids reading Wolf and Batsy. You're very close. Jeez, I'm, I I think I'm being like wonderfully uh, <laughs> obtuse, but everybody seems to be reading through. Wolf and Betsy and Horse H2 are like cartoons in the world, so they actually have action oh, figures they're playing with. Very cool. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, and you know you can we can get those Horse H Hoover's uh, not action figures, but he's got the statues for yes, sale. Yes, I think. he makes resin statues. Yeah, that that's another thing I would love to do in the in the future. Is, you know, higher, higher Fabrizio. Lots of writing on this. You know, I, 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 I have a, a variant cover for fun, fun my comic by Pat Broderick. Mm-hmm. Who, uh, when I first got into comics back in like 1974, Pat Bro- Pat Broderick was drawing uh, the original, well, not the original, the Marvel Captain Marvel. Oh, and God, did I love those comics? That's Pat Broderick right there. Did that cover? That's Renzo, but that's Pat Broderick mm-hmm. right there. And I love, he was the first comic book artist that I became obsessed with. So I was like, my first comic, I got to get my first favorite, I, you know, uh, he's worked with Mike Barron and I, I had Mike Barron on my channel a few times. So I asked Mike Barron and he talked to Pat, Pat, you know, said, sure, you know, I'd love to, he was such a great guy to talk to, you know, and I, I'm like directed Pat Broderick. I was like, I can't, I can't do whatever you want. I, who am I to tell you what to draw? You know? <laughs> and look at that. That is just awesome. You know, that's cool. And then uh, what, what, you know, I'm, I'm going to do exclusively on fun, my comics for, for two months. And then I'm going to do Kickstarter. And I have another variant mm-hmm. cover by Michael T. Gilbert, another artist that I absolutely love. I'm not showing that image yet. I kind of want to wait to build up the surprise, but Michael T. Gilbert does the, uh, does the, uh, Mr. Monster series that came out from like Pacific Comics, EC Comics, and then shows up every once in a while in, in different different companies. I love Mr. Monster, and he was such a pleasure. And he just said, "Can I do this?" And I'm like, "That's a funny cover." Yeah, yeah, go ahead, do it. So he has like a more humorous cover. And then the third cover, I want to when I go to Indiegogo, another two months from there, I don't know yet. I'm, I'm talking with a few people, and uh, you know. I, artists are, are like cats to herd you know they, they don't respond yeah. so, so at this point out of the six people that i've been contacted whoever responds back the first is, is gonna get <laughs> but they're all top quality guys so it's not like i'll be disappointed so yeah, i want to have sure i want to have three different campaigns but three reasons to go to these different campaigns you know so mm-hmm. so they'll be, there'll be four covers all together the, the, you know the renzo one is the the a cover and then a variant just for exclusive to each campaign because you got, you got to make them different if you go to different different uh, platforms. Oh so, yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Marcus says Andy Smith would do a great patriarch. Yes, yes, he would. I have an idea for. It's it's funny because I think like oh yeah I know these guys like they do. I have a, I have a, a, a one of the issues is set in 1999. It's going to deal with Y2K was real in the superhero world, and I'm like I want to get a. So I'm like Andy Smith would be like like in my mind he already said yes like you know what I mean like so that, that'll be Andy Smith so like I'm I'm you know I, how arrogant is that to think that he's gonna say yes to to a project that is probably years away like you know so yes Marcus I did think of Andy Smith he would be perfect but like <laughs> arrogant me is thinking that he'd be oh yeah sure I'd love to do this you know story later on like and I want him to do it like the image style you know the old nineties mm-hmm, mm-hmm. style. That'd be cool. Yeah, I, like I have a kaiju issue coming up, and and I, nice and I Frankie Washington who loves kaiju's. You know, uh, Frankie and kaiju go together like yeah, peanut yeah. butter and jelly. It would almost be a sin 
not to have Frankie somehow involved in, in, in a kaiju. Yeah, right. You know what I mean, you need like a you need like a special fold out poster that right. comes. And with again, it. how arrogant! I didn't even ask it yet, and I'm already talking about it like it's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know if it's kaiju involved. Like yeah. you know, well, I t I tweeted at him. I don't know if he saw it yet. Yeah, so <laughs> he's a good guy. I had him on well, the channel once. He's uh, he's he so fun to talk to. He's fun to talk to. He's he talks more than me. You just say hello to him. And next thing you know, it's like, good night, everybody. You know, he, he, and he's so <laughs> energetic and he's happy, you know, and he knows his comics. Oh my God. You know, he knows his comics. Yeah. And it's interesting too, because, um, you know, he, he's really got a whole handle on the whole, like, the manga business. and anime from like back in the seventies right. where you don't see a whole lot of Americans who know much about that. But he'll, you know, he'll be like, hey, hang on, let me get a chalkboard and diagram this out for you. And, and not only, that, and then he starts to, because because he he's been working in, in marketing, so yeah. all, he just went on a not a tangent, but he just was like, okay, and he started explaining things in business, and I was just like, I never thought of any of this, you know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm in the construction trade, so I don't think about like I think about his marketing as much as a guy who's in the construction trade. So he was yeah. explaining like the advertisement rates and how to do this and why this came out and you know why they happened and you know and it's it it was so interesting i really enjoy that when i talk to somebody who uh schools me on something that i don't know you know i, I had chuck dixon on and he was talking about uh dell comics a, a whole like chuck, dell comics was the biggest comic book company in the world and mm -hmm. you know nothing i know nothing about it today you know i know i know next to nothing i know I, that they they went under earlier than uh yeah, they, they went from the like printing literally millions of copies a month to, to, to going out of business. I, I, I bought a book. I have it right here. It's the history of Dell Comics. I, I, I got to actually read it. You know, buying the buying the book is not the uh, the thing. It's the reading. it. It's just called it's called uh, funny books. Hmm. OK, uh, so Chuck Dixon recommended it. So I, I got to pick that up every time. I, I, my wife's like, are oh, you doing a live chat tonight? That's going to cost you 20 bucks. Because every time I have a live chat with somebody, I'm either funding their comic or buying something that they're <laughs> What do you got for me? What, what, what do you well, want to buy? <laughs> Hold still. There's not, more. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Give me another. Ugh, having website troubles. Otherwise, I'd have my, my thing up. But um, are, are you are you planning on a comic? And are you making? Comic is going to be a year or two down the line. I am. Uh, well, I'll gonna, help you I'll help oh, you. thanks. I've got my D&D &D campaign guy. Uh, oh, I plan right. on funding in October. Yes, that is that is exciting. Oh, and since you brought that up, if, if you put up my campaign again, we'll, we'll scroll down to the bottom. So, you know, he's the reward. You can get the comic. He can get three comics. You can get the pint glass. I, uh, just Nick designed this page. Look at how beautiful it is. Sc scroll down. I'm, po I'm pointing like you could see my hand, but I just love this. I wanted to put a couple of interior pages to show people mm -hmm. that I'm not just getting Renzo to do the covers and then hiring Phil Moskowitz, you know, El Cheapo to, to, yeah. to fill. I, I, I hate that bait and switch. I want you to see that the art and the colors inside are just as good as the colors outside. You know, I'm, I'm not joking, guys. This is $10 for this comic book is, is awesome. You, you get, you, you're getting, the best work by people today keep scrolling down i wanted to show you uh you can see that that's the statue in the background i was like oh yeah you. you know what i mean it, he he's this the industrialist is this monstrous mm -hmm. presence and that's that's boss moxie you know he's been affected by the energies of the town and you don't I like his that. dames yeah those are the that's he's got dames gams and mall those those are his three <laughs> chips <laughs> nice you know? you know and of course like this one is like she's squeeing when he shows up. She's like, Oh, look, daddy's here. You know, and he kisses her lips. He's all charming, you know. Mm -hmm. He's 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 a flirt, but he's loyal, you know. And and then scroll up more. Up oh. here's more pages. Oh, oh, oh down. No, sorry. Oh, scroll down more. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If if you have sharp eyes, yeah, keep going, keep going. If you have sharp eyes, right, you can see Wolf and Batsy. Oh out. yeah, that's he. He's got a wolf, nope. and then I wanted this panel to show you that his he's not a Superman ripoff. You know, he 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 was a fanboy of comics, so he you know for he he read a comic that was legally distinct from Superman, 
And, you know, so he's dressing up like Superman. He's acting like Superman. He's vastly less powerful than Superman. And his powers are vastly different than Superman. But he's smart enough. And, you know, there's people that he, he has, like, handlers, too, that aren't, don't make it to the first issue. But he's uh, smart enough and wise enough to know, like, I got to be friendly. You know, it's just think about how scary it is to have superpowers if you are a nasty. So he, he tries to, like... He, he got a costume that that tested well as 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 friendly because he he wants to be like when Superman shows up you go oh wow Superman's here so that's that's the way he's doing it even though he has he has a uh, telekinetic powers I I, I didn't uh, want to tell that but he has telekinetic he has mental powers yes he yeah. he's no he's not physically stronger than anybody else so if you could sneak up to him uh, you're gonna you're gonna knock him out and that's actually one of the things in this comic is one of the guys is figuring out. He, He's like you're you're a fraud. You're not as powerful as as you, as you pretend to be, you know. So I'm setting up the return of the main villain, you know. Mm. So does he have a secret ID, or do people oh, know who he is? Uh, I didn't do his origin. Uh, I I didn't because I didn't think people would understand the gravitas of of everything if they didn't like the character. So I figured, you know, like Doctor Strange, the first issue was just a, an adventure of Doctor Strange, and mm -hmm. then wrong when they did the origin you're like oh okay i'm invested in this character now. same with dr doom you know like all my so i just like all right he's he he's in the world and then uh his 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 second appearance is is going to be the team up with the, the 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 dark street avenger so it's going to be like a superman batman team up and then his third appearance is actually going to be his origin and he he was an emt he was always a good guy maybe a little naive you know and uh he rescues well he, he saves a mad scientist and the mad scientist is the one that uh says hold this hide this thing he shows up I, I i'm telling too much but his origin is he 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 showed up because he's an emt to to a a person who is shot in the street mm -hmm. oh he shows up there's an old wizened man with the wizard beard you know like and he he revises him and the guy he hands him something because they they killed me for this you gotta hide this you gotta hide this. so he just takes it and and you know and whatever and then he goes into the and his partner is not a good guy his partner's been robbing the wallets of all the patients you know they're unconscious they're dying so he goes to get this whatever it is i don't want to spoil it and he's like did you take it what are you accusing me of and, you know next thing you know over the course of the days they're like did, where is it where? and they find out he has been stealing stuff and they start fighting or the other guy attacks the patriarch and they start fighting and then their powers manifest and that's how it happens in public in a hospital so he has no id you know what i mean it he, 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 you know every he and his power like he has the tele so the other guy tries to hit him he goes like this to defend himself and he's making telekinetic shields you know he's because he's not a fighter he was he, you know he was a, a healer you know he, he was a, a sweet naive guy who trusted his partner and everything so he actually has to learn how to take defensive powers and make them offensive you know again i'm, I'm telling too much you you got me you got me monologuing this gang again you're doing it again it's all right so i wanted to ask you about this so in your yeah, stretch this, goals this is what i was hoping you'd go uh when you mentioned your D, &D campaign these are mm -hmm. stretch goal cards i mean it's no secret they're going to be characters the patriarch boss boxy the, the the three girls and then the the main bad guy who I don't want to spoil yet. You keep seeing the robot spiders and stuff like that. So I'll, I'll keep that. So for every thousand dollars that we hit, I'm going to unlock a card and oh, Renzo nice. already through the art. Daniel's doing the color as we speak. And then on the back, I'm said to Nick, Nick X. I, I, I joke around like I, he didn't give himself a credit in this. And I keep saying, what credit would you like? He's like, ah. so I was joking around saying, you're the turd polisher. You know, he took my bed because my campaign got it rejected the first time I put sent oh. it to because I didn't know what I was doing. It, I, it's me. I, and he cleaned it up and made it this beautiful, beautiful campaign page. So I joke around. So he's going to do the graphic design and it's going to have their stats, you know, the patriarch's mm -hmm. intelligence, his charisma, his strength, nice. you know, and then what exactly his powers are. So, so yeah. So my question was, you know, as since you're a big gamer yourself, are yes. these going to be part of a game? These collector's I, cards? Originally, the intent was that they were going to be usable in the Villains and Vigilantes system. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's owned by Fantasy Games Unlimited. They have not responded. I, I got phone numbers. I called a little old lady who had no idea what I was talking about answered, so I had I got wrong information. So I, I, 
I can't say it. So it's legally distinct from the villains of vigilantes. The stats are okay, one to twenty. It's not three to eighteen. So it's a it's a different system. <laughs> but you you know they can't copyright their rules, right? I know, but uh e e even like a, a hint of, of, of a lawyer will, will cause my <laughs> house of cards to crumble, you know. Okay. Oh, Mac has a question. Hey John, how do you get the collector cards that are not in the offered bundle? You get them you get them. If we if if I if my crowdfunding makes three thousand dollars, you're gonna get one card. If if it makes four thousand, you don't have to do anything. Uh you it, it that's that's what a stretch goal is. The more money that I make, well, first off, it's gonna fund the next issue because I laid out all the money for the first issue. So this this will make the second issue, and then I can throw in extra stuff. You know what I mean? So I, I could throw in cards. Um I, maybe I'm getting a Maybe I'm getting arrogant and thinking I'll make eight thousand dollars, but I'd rather shoot for the moon and not make it than uh, than it, it's a hit and I'm, I'm I'm scrambling to reward everybody for being you know enthusiastic and and, and nice enough to back my comic. So, so I'd, I'd rather err on the side of sunshine and happiness. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If you look at it like that. So so uh, uh, who is that, Mac? You don't have to do anything. Actually, you can do something. You tell your friends to back because the more people back. You'll, you'll get all six cards and you'll get a metal coin, you know, so. Very cool. And, now, and, orig and originally uh, the, the eight page backup was going to be a stretch goal. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, so I, I uh, Ron and Daniel colored the first two pages. I said, just do it. Just do it. You know, I'm so excited. And again, I think it's, I think it really is good. You guys see this artwork. You guys see this coloring. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's like, just I right now it's like thirty pages. It'll be more depending upon if 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 my coordinating artists get get the uh, the the other stuff back in time. It's it's, it's going to be one of the best ten dollar comics you'll ever get, if not the best. You know. So I don't I don't know what. So uh, just, just spread the word, and you'll get all the cards. Uh, so I did have a question about the cards. So is this uh are the stretch goals only available for people who back on fund my comic or when you do your subsequent campaign on kickstarter will it be there as well it'll it'll be there as well it'll be there as well the cards will be on all of them the only difference is right now unless i have a brilliant idea which doesn't happen it the only difference is going to be the varied cover the, the pat broderick you got to get on fund my comic so if you're if you're a fan of Pat Broderick or you just think that that cover is awesome and it is awesome, you you go fund my comic. When I go to Kickstarter and I, I'm not talking out of tales out of school, Luke already knows. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go exclusively for two months, exclusively for two, two months because I don't want to compete against myself on multiple platforms. Right, right. But here's a little secret: we'll go in demand on fund my comic, so you'll you'll be able to get the Pat Broderick cover for a long time. Then when we go to crowd or we go to Kickstarter. There will be exclusively the uh, Michael T. Gilbert cover, and then when I go to nice. Indiegogo, again the six artists that I'm talking to, whoever, whoever you know, confirms the first will, will be that. And then, you know, if if it's a big hit, well, I'll, I'll I'll make my own store, and then you'll probably be able to get whatever cover you want <laughs> if, if if all goes well. I'm a terrible salesman, guys. I'm sorry. I'm I'm an enthusiastic comic book fan. Bus businessman. If I was, you know, if I was a businessman, I wouldn't have went into construction. Uh, it's no yes, worries. Right Plus, now you I know, have the bright glasses available. You know, with the heroic tales logo on one side, and then the patriarch's symbol on the other. The glare from the light is is killing it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and that I that's something I want to do. Is every character is going to have a cool logo? You know, so. I'm really proud of, of, of issue two. Oh, that's another thing. We're going to have a, a preview page of issue two because I don't want people to be surprised and upset and call shenanigans. You're going to see issue two. Mm -hmm. Mary Sue is the name of that character. And uh, Mary Sue is is a spoof on a Mary Sue. She's she's perfect. She's perfect in every way. And she's a superhero. And, you know, but the goof is I'm subverting expectations in the fact that Mary Sue does struggle with everything. Just imagine you're gifted with the, the the powers to basically do whatever you want, but you don't know you have that power. And then once you figure out you have that power, you don't want to use it because it's the butterfly effect. If I change reality to do this, something else that I didn't foresee happens. You know. Sure. So the first time she uses her powers, she's like, "I think I just made things worse. Like I got the result I wanted." 
you know, and she's a good person. Does she really want other people to suffer? So she, her life is, is per so I, 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 I'm excited about, it. she was going to be issue number one, but they needed to be too much invested in the world. Mm. So I'm like, look, look, the patriarchs are fun, interesting, you know, first issue kind of character. So uh, I remember we were talking before and you mentioned there were at least three characters that you were going to sort of like cycle in, you know, like one issue on the patriarch, second one on Mary Sue. Issue, Mary Sue. Was it three or five? And the third issue is going to be the Raven. He's, 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 oh, okay. he's, uh, he's an undercover cop who, who goes in with, 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 the, with the, 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 the crime. And just like Donnie Brasco, he can't leave. So he's calling his, his wife. And uh, she's like, it's too late. I'm, I'm already, I already left the house. So he lost everything. So, you know, so this mm. is, and now he's just like, well, I lost my wife. I lost my family, you know, well, 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 and well, I got nothing to lose now. So now he, he's just taking it out on the villains, you know, like, like he, he, he's again, he was broad eyed, bushy tailed. He arrested a guy because he's, he's really a cop. And then he sees the guy goes free. So now he dresses up as the Raven and he, beats the guy up, brings him to the jail, and, the cop, and he goes free. The guy's like, yeah, some maniac in a comp in a bird suit beat me up. I, I was just walking down the street. So now he's like, whatever I do doesn't matter. So he breaks their arms. You know, he doesn't even try to, like, he, like he'll curb stomp you. He'll just break your lip. So he is the punisher, but, like, the, the other superheroes are like, you got to knock this off. You know, you, you can't mm -hmm. do this. You're not a superhero. You know, he... So it's he doesn't he doesn't kill, but if he did kill, he he wouldn't feel bad about it. So he he is my exploration into the uh, the anti hero. You know, mm, that's interesting. So, like the Punisher, he lost his family, but they're still alive. That that's a very interesting take, especially for twenty twenty four. Yeah, and then and then uh, so then so that'll be kind of a dark issue. Then issue four, I'm not telling you anything about, but it's kind of a light hearted. Not funny, but like more light, like maybe an homage to like the Silver Age. Oh, and then, cool. And then issue, so that's issue four. Then issue five is going to be the Raven and the Patriarch team up, and you're going to learn a lot about both of their back stories. So it's the first time Superman and Batman get together kind of thing. And you realize this Patriarch is the goodest of the good guys, and the, and the Raven is this close to being a villain. Yeah, it sounds interesting. They sound very, you know, yin and yang, very opposite yes. sides well, I, of the coin. I'm a mythological guy, so patriarch is dying, is is Apollo, light culture, mm -hmm. and 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 the Raven is Dionysus, mystery, darkness. You know, like it, it self indulgence. So you know, that's that was the archetype. I they were literally called Apollo and Dionysus when I first started creating all this stuff, and then I'm like, this is too. Uh, Esoteric. Too old timey, yeah. yeah so, so I, 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 and and then I, you know, keep in mind this was 15 years ago, and I was like, yeah, we're gonna make it edgy, and and now I'm like, you know what? I, I want blue sky superheroes. I want it to be fun. You read it with your kids, but like, like I want you to read it with your kids, and your kids go like, Dad, this this guy's not really a good guy. He's kind of a bad guy. That's that's the Raven. You know, he's 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 out of his mind. He's he's a psycho. Yes, I do have a Western idea, and it's gonna be set in the same world in the past. And I was thinking, you know, maybe maybe heroic Western tales, I'll call it one issue. Like that was going to be a one off, you know, with with a completely different artist, because, you know, I, I want to have like 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 somebody like Nick Axe, if you ever seen his art for mm -hmm. the story, like like he would. But nobody wants to draw horses. So I'm having a hard time finding an artist who wants. Yeah, to but I have I have I have a, a, a Western. And then I also have a superhero Western story because there's going to be one character who has story going from colonial times to modern times you know there's always an immortal character there's always a legacy character so I, i'm not joking i got like 20 issues planned and then there's going to be the team you know there's going to be a, 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 a like the, the the heroes that started it all back before world war ii and then world war ii you know the guy who was the boxer you know who taught all the other superheroes how, how to fight you know i, I got a story for him you know I don't want to reveal the names because that's so long in the future. Next thing you know, mm -hmm. everybody else is going to have a character. Oh, that's a great name. Because uh, I, I was on one of the panels with somebody and he was like, isn't it hard to come up with superhero names? I'm like, yeah, yeah it is. That's why you got to work harder. You know, like, oh, not to be mean, but a lot of guys are coming up with terrible names for superheroes. Or worse, yeah. 
names that have nothing to do with superheroes. You know, like the superhero name is a focus for the character. Like if if I didn't tell you anything about the patriarch, mm-hmm. I think you would know exactly what he is about, and like you wouldn't guess his powers because I I kind of obfuscated his powers and then revealed everything in this this talk. But you know, like a, I'm trying to think of one of my characters that who's whose name I can reveal. The statesman. What is the statesman? Okay. What is what is he like? Well, I would guess he has like upper class, something to do with the government or secret society or something like that. Oh, I was going to say he's the patriotic Captain America guy. Oh, you know? okay. Yeah, he's the statesman. He represents the states. You know, yeah. he's, you know, he's patriot, you know. So you got, you, the name has to focus. So, uh, so I, again, I'm dying to reveal some of these names. So I, I've been role playing this superhero game for, for 40 years. I have. I, it's, I'm going to sound like what's his name, Mitt Romney. I have binders full of superheroes, you know, <laughs> all my role play games. And uh, I, I've been asking some of my friends, and they're excited for me to put their characters in as as superheroes. You know, oh please, like my friend Mike's character, Marshall Strong. He's he's the Nick Fury guy. He's the superhero lies between the the military, the government, and the superheroes. But I was reluctant to use because he made him up. He rolled those characters. Mm-hmm. And he was like, no, you made him up more than me. You gave him his name. You know, I changed his powers around. He goes, you know, use it, use it. Um, yeah, I don't know. A lot of a lot of people like have said, oh, you know, you shouldn't do things like that because it's too much inside baseball and people outside wouldn't understand it. But for me, it's great. Like, uh, you know, in the campaign guide I'm working on, one of my uh, friends was was in a test group and uh, his character started on this ship that he named the Salt Grinder. And I was like, damn, that's a much better name than what I would have come up with. All right, Salt Grinder it is. <laughs> you know, there's I no see. reason. What Geeks Do Network says, how many issues are written out? Uh, four total full-on scripts, but I'm, I'm changing them because uh, I wrote them years ago. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I already told Renzo, the day we launch, if it's a successful launch, issues script for number two is coming you know what i mean because he, he, he's he's not quite done with he's about 75 percent done with the art so there will not be a gap we're going right into issue two if it's a successful launch and then i'm rewriting all the scripts i have uh outlines for about 15 issues you know just this happens this happens this happens this happens this happens you know and that that can be changed but full scripts i, I have about four full scripts and yeah nice. um, i i've People have been telling me, I'm looking forward to this. I'm looking to, and I'm, I'm getting so nervous that I actually am consulting like a script editor to make, you know what I mean? Because, go oh, good. You know, it ran, I had, I had editors. I sent the script out to, to friends, but these were all guys who just like comic books. Mm. Oh, this is the fun comic book. And then one friend who didn't read comic books and her advice was just totally worthless. You know what I mean? But because she doesn't get comic books. But yeah. Okay. So now you I'm know, a professional to, 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 you know, to, to go over everything because, I really don't want to disappoint anybody, you know, because the art is perfect. The the coloring is outstanding. The the product itself, you know, Nick is helping with it with the graphic design. Everything I'm the weak link. So if there's gonna be any criticism, it's gonna be me. So I I you know I, and I've been I'm not too uh, proud to ask for help. You know, if I didn't ask for help, this this never would have gotten off the ground. So so what geeks do network, yes, I'm I'm taking this very seriously. You know, you only get to make your first comic once in your life. And I do not want to make a mistake. I do think that is one of the bigger issues in the indie comic scene is that uh, people don't get an editor. And, you know, and it's if you can, it's better to get uh, an editor who has some art experience, too. Because one thing I've noticed is there's a lot of people who come like with literary backgrounds, like they've written short stories, they've written novels, and they'll bring an editor they're comfortable working with but then because they're not used to working with art they don't know how to oh, um you know make no bones about the, the, the guy i'm hiring i don't want to give names because he didn't give me permission to give names yet sure but, sure uh, sure he's a comic book fan nice you know, so he, he he knows you know he he knows and i trust him implicitly he's a good guy um i know he's gonna pull no punches which i appreciate you know so but uh it's a good time to redo the script because i i sent renzo all the pages and him being a phenomenal artist he added a panel here removed a panel here because you know what i mean 
Mm -hmm. and, and it still flows. The storytelling is really great. So I have to redo the script to match the new panel layout, which is perfectly. Okay. So I'm like, okay, at this, this is the perfect time. I'm going to rewrite the script. You know, let's, let's get a, let's get a, a neutral professional observer to, to, to crush my dreams and, 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 <laughs> and cry. So, so when you write, do you write everything out first, like including all the dialogue or do you do what some people would say is the Marvel method in uh, like, you just write sort of the outline and like the panels. And then when you get it back, then you write the dialogue in. I, 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 I write an outline and then I throw it away. And then I, I write a different comic because that stunk. And then I come back to the first one that I realized wasn't that bad. And I rewrite the outline and, and then I change this is better. And then I wake up in the middle and I go, this is a better way to do it. Wake up and rewrite the out. You know what I mean? That's, that's the way. It, and then after about 10 rewrites of the outline, then I sit down and okay, page one panel, this, and I, you know, and I try to think of the comp panel, how many panels does it take to tell this, you know, like the page reveal. Okay. He transforms into the werewolf. You don't see the werewolf here. Then you turn the page as a werewolf. You know what I mean? Like I try mm -hmm. to do that. And then, of course, that throws my outline out the window again. But every stage, you're fixing it. If that makes if that makes sense. So it's it's not finalized. Like right now, Renzo, I think is at 17 out of 22 pages. We're not we're not. I'm not redoing 10 pages because I have a better idea at this point. So now it's 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 polishing up the dialogue and and the captions. You know, at this point, like I'm, all of, I'm not going to throw Godzilla in because I had a better idea for because I already had. Oh, I do it different already. You know, you you never done. At one mm -hmm. point, are you going? I'm not George Lucas either. I'm not going to erase it. And make Guido shooting first. You know. Um. So you mentioned you have uh Renzo. You know he he's doing the first one. Um. Is he going to do all the other ones, or are you going to do like yeah, one Renzo artist per be my character? Artist any more than I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. Oh. Sport. You know, so we 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 had a, a talk, and he he was politely asking me like, "Should I get other jobs?" You know, and I said, "Do whatever you want, but I want you." Like I, I I'm not the tyrant. I'm not. But I said, so I'm sending you. I sent him a couple of pages of of issue two already that I know I'm not changing because the opening mm -hmm. is the opening is the opening. So he's already going right into issue two because I, I I I'm afraid to lose him. He's that good. You know, other people have already looked at the pan. Oh wow, can I hire a rental? Yeah, sure, you can. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not the tyrant, but I, I don't want to. And I think we have a really great working relationship. You know, we talk on the phone. You know, we, we, you know, he's coming on my channel. We're gonna have a, a you know, I, I would like to have all the guys that work with. In oh, the big nice. Talk about the comic. If I raise enough money, crowdfunding, I'm flying them to New York. We'll do. We'll go to a comic convention and you know, you know, show them around New York City and get them good pizza and stuff, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, I, I, I love the guy. I, I, I call him the saint, you know, St. Renzo. And, you know, he, he gets shy, you know, he, he doesn't take a compliment too well, but I, I, I think he's, he's, I think the world of him, he's a great guy. Everybody on my team is so good. Uh, where's the I'm a tyrant. I haven't been allowed to leave by that. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> if you just do it right, when I tell you to do it right and stop sleeping and eating and talking to your wife, you'd be able to leave your desk. It's his own fault. Nick. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, so nice, I'll let you have 2% two, 2 more light in the basement. <laughs> okay, Nick? You want to play hardball? Uh, so, all right. So you mentioned you've got four written. Uh, how many do you think you're going to come out with, or ideally, how many would you like to start coming out with per year? Uh, I, that's just it. What is realistic? You know, like uh, the... The first one was a big learning curve. I didn't know what I'm doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I'll, I'll admit that to everybody. For, for a guy who didn't know what the hell they were doing, I'm, this comic is so freaking good looking. I'm so excited. Now I got a great team. I knew, you know, we could go right into right into issue two. I think without a without a a, a hitch. You know, so really the realistic thing is, uh, Renzo. You know, I don't want to kill the guy. You know, it, does does he want to keep drawing? Does he want to take another project? Does he you know how how is is he is he tired? Does he want to take a vacation? So I don't know. I got I I would like to do two three a year. I think that would be realistic, but I also don't want to do two or three bad a year. 
but I also yeah. don't want it to be five years in between comics either. So, you know, I'm I'm a newbie. I'm, I I put like a like a six month delivery date on this. I th- I think I'll be earlier. I'd rather err on the side of, wow, John, you know, the, the Scotty from Star Trek. Oh, I need six hours, and then and then we're finished in two hours. You know what I mean? And everybody thinks I'm a miracle worker. So, you know, I'm I'm hoping that by the time the third campaign is done we could be ready to do the second campaign. You, you know what I mean? Like I said, I'm going to do fun. My comic kickstarted mm-hmm. Indiegogo. By the time oh. Indiegogo is done, we could probably launch issue two on, on fun. My comic. That's, oh, okay. Nice. That's kind of my goal. So that I'll, maybe I'll constantly have, you know, something, something going. I, it, that's, that's the goal. Who knows? Who knows? If, if Nick, if Nick just stops goofing around and talking to his wife, you know, and, Jeez, going Nick, and stuff like that. Yeah, come on, man. And Shadow Punk says the artwork is incredible. Yeah, Renzo is so good. And Shadow Punk, your your art is so good too. I don't know if you've seen his comic, Shadow. No, Shadow. no. Uh, I I felt bad because I missed it, and he sent me a copy, and oh. he made a fan for life. You know, I can't stop raving about this. You know. So there you go. Very he cool. Has a called Shadow Punk, and and if uh. It, a shadow punk if you email or, or twitter at, at at marcus he'll put a link in the description hmm. uh so always, always help your buddies you know that's one of the things i sure. promote when you're ready to promote every we got we got to promote it's about comics it's not about personalities you know yeah i'm i mean you know especially in the indie business uh right. where we're like the redheaded stepchild of the redheaded stepchild industry uh, cause nobody <laughs> takes comic series anyways. Of the redheaded stepchild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I, I see a lot of feuding in the mainstream and jelly petty, you know, if you, if your campaign makes $500,000, that doesn't hurt me. In, in no. fact, it makes, it makes it nicer because we're friendly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if my campaign, <laughs> let's, let's, let's be blue sky, shoot the moon. My campaign does phenomenal. And then I could talk about guys like Shadow Punk or, or, or you know, Nick is doing the art for Crom the Destroyer. Renzo, who's one of the first piece. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting excited. RJ from the Fourth Age was one of the first people to reach out and talk to me in the, in the YouTube thing. You know, if my comic does phenomenally well, why wouldn't I help RJ? You know what I mean? He's He's been nothing but nice to me. He's a great guy. He puts out great comics. So I don't understand this this jealousy and fighting. That guy's doing better than me, whatever. Yeah, plus, you know, you want to talk to everyone because there's right. all sorts of different genres. And, like, maybe there's someone who's not interested in uh, superheroes, right? You say, oh, well, uh, yeah, you know, this guy, guy over here. Like superheroes, yes. <laughs> yeah, they just point him in the right direction. You know, hey, well, you know, this guy's doing horror books. Or this right. guy's doing sci-fi. Or, you know? And they'll do the same thing. Uh, you know, if if I'm doing a horror book. And someone's like, oh, I don't know, horror. Like, oh, well, if you like classic superheroes, go check out Heroic right. Tales. And since you brought up horror, Brian Bow is in the chat. Mm-hmm. He does a great comic, Wolf and Batsy. You know, it, it, it's it's like classic horror film, uh, Hammer films. You know, a, a werewolf mm-hmm. and a bat, or, uh, a werewolf and a vampire are best friends looking, looking for a place to live. And just when you think it's going this way, Brian does that. And now... I, I, I just, I don't know what to do. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like thrilled. I, I, what, what I'm talking about is I predicted it was going to do this and he totally, totally beat my prediction. I play a game whenever I read a comic. I tried to outguess the writer. Mm-hmm. Brian beat me, you know, so tonic molds beat me. I don't know where tonic mold is going in a wonderful way. So <laughs> I enjoy that. Nice. Yeah. I, I've got a, several of the first, uh, Wolf and Batsy issues. Oh. Uh, Checking out his campaign now. Yeah, he 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 he's he's a great guy. He he's been helping me every step of the way. He's you know, uh, he he just got trading cards for his campaign, and he was like, "I'm gonna release them like one card for every that." And boom, in the first day, he released all the cards because his campaign did so well. You know, so nice. So he gave me the information on how to get the cards made. You know, who to talk to. Like I said, we all help each other. You know, we all help each other. That's the way it's got to be. Nick Axe is asking for fantasy. Um, I I don't have any fantasy comic. I I take it back. I have a mythological grand epic that I would like to do, but it will it it will have nothing to do with heroic tales. And it, it 
in my dreams, if I'm successful, this is going to be like one of those European oversized hardcover editions, like a hundred pages. Oh, nice. You know what I mean? And I, and I don't want to, I don't want to say anything because I know somebody will steal that idea in a heartbeat. I, I, <laughs> I think Brian and Nick are the only two people who know that idea. Very cool. Um, so I got, I so got all that idea. I've wanted to do this my whole life, but you know, it, it's impossible to break into comics. It's, you know, it, and, and then they just got harder yeah. and harder. You know, it's always been who you know, but it was who you know normal. Now it's who who do you know that you fit these identity politics check boxes? Let's face it, I don't I don't check any identity to politics check boxes. So and, and then <laughs> yeah, I saw yeah. I saw Richard C. Meyer over at you know Diversity in Comics. He made a comic on his own. He got he got a super talented artist right off the X-Men. And then I saw other people doing it, and I'm like. I, I I could do this, and I you know, I started doing it, and then when I started flailing about, other people threw me life preservers and helped me out, and I'm I will forever be uh, grateful to that. Well, that's the way you got to do it. Although even in the old days, um, you know, people would self fund or or self publish a comic or two, just sort of like as proof of concept before they go to the big two. Right. Uh, so you know, it seems like that's the way everybody needs to start anyways. You need to prove that you can actually get something done. And, and you know what? I the crowd, as much as we just like, Oh, crowdfunding. Yeah. We all know the guys at work. When I explain what it is, they are baffled, you know, like they, they have no uh -huh. concept of, of, you know, my, my I, I'm from a large family. My own brothers and sisters are like, well, what is crowdfunding? What, what does this mean? You're like I'm paying for your comic book, but you know, and, and, you know, cause I have a, my friend that was the editor, you know, she's a mm -hmm. PhD psychologist. I was like, oh, it's happening. And I sent her the link. And she's like, what happens? Thousand, you need $1,000? You, you're, are you asking me for, you know, because the goal was $1,000. So she thinks I'm asking her for $1,000. I'm like, no, no, no. If I don't raise $1,000, the comic doesn't get made. But then I pay for the comic book and it doesn't get made. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it yeah, is a bizarre. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so I, 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 I said, tonight, well, tonight I got a lot of live chats. So tomorrow I'm got, I'm actually writing an email because all my friends and family are all on this email. I got to explain what crowdfunding is to people. And I got business cards made up with the QR code. Tonic Mole made it for me again. Everybody's been nice. so helpful. So I'm going to give it to the guys at work. And the, all they got to do is use their phone and it'll take to the Fund My Comic website so they could pledge. Because if I tell them, it's on Fund My Comic, look for it. Tell them, okay. And then they're going to go home. They're not going to room. But I never going to happen. I was like, I can't give them the card until the campaign's active because they're going to scan it and say it doesn't work. Oh, you know that's I mean? true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, I, you know, construction workers think very literally. You know what I mean? We, we yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they scan it doesn't work, okay, there's a problem. They move on. But So I'm going to wait till the 26th of April, give give everybody I know a card, you know, hand them out, you know. So the, the QR code. Uh, this leads me into a, another question I was wondering. Sure. You know, um, sort of where where do you plan on going uh outside of like this very narrow slice of crowdfunding in the future so you got to start somewhere right and you right. gotta you got you gotta get some money to pay for the comics so crowdfunding makes sense but overall um you know the amount of people who read comics and are looking for indie comics and are looking for indie comics on crowdfunding sites is, is just it's a very different. small right. slice of the pie. Uh, like, are you thinking in the future, maybe some sort of digital uh, distribution well, or well, are you thinking about here? On, mm -hmm. on, if you could get the comic digitally, which I was against because I I'm an old fart and I like to have a comic book in my hand. So, and, and other people like, well, you know, I, I live in Germany. I don't want to get your comic in it. You know? Yeah. So I, I, to be a smart businessman, I have to offer a digital tier. I had RJ from Critical Blast on my channel. He does a fulfillment service. You know, again, mm -hmm. this is me not knowing anything to finding out that there's such things as fulfillment services. For those of you who don't know, a, a fulfillment service, if you if I have a crowdfunding, I'll get the proof of concepts, I'll get, you know, I'll okay the prints of the comic and everything's fine. I'll 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 get the, the bulk of it, you know, the main thing just shipped right to him. It doesn't even come to my house. It'll go to RJ and then he'll distribute everything and in a week everything will be done by a professional provided it's successful i told him if it's 99 comics or less i'll do it if it's 101 comics or more you'll do it because i'm afraid of messing it up so now he was telling me that once you have a successful campaign down and, and you're getting into a routine and you he goes he has ways 
to get into comic book stores. He has, you know, trade paperbacks and hardcovers. So there's a lot of options for the future. And I'm, I'm always thinking about that. I have grand ideas. And then my wife is like, you know, I bounce things off for her and she's more realistic than me. I, I'm, I'm a dreamer. But I, I always tell my wife, it's don't worry about it until it's time to worry because my wife mm -hmm. doesn't worry about things. And I also say, don't, don't get excited about this until it's time to get excited. So I'm taking my own advice. I, I, right now, a lot is mattering on, 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 on the 26th of April, the launch date. You know what I mean? I think mm -hmm. I'll have a lot more information to, uh, I'm, I'm being optimistic and I, I already proceeded to do the backup story, which was a stretch goal. And, and I'm already making the cards, all six of them, hoping that I hit, you know, if, if I don't make it, I don't know what I'm going to do. I shouldn't have said that, but I, I talk too much. And I'm already starting issue number two. You know, nice. If, if it's so, maybe in six months from now, we'll start talking about like, okay, can, can we get this the comic book store? Because look at the look at those covers. That would look great in a comic book store. You yeah. know, that would catch well, your eye. I think too. I think comic book stores are going to be easier once you have a certain volume of right. issues too because you know um like even in the uh the that mark millar interview where he had four comic book stores on there they're like yeah, yeah we don't want to have indies um but i think you could but if it's like if you think about it from a customer point of view how disappointing is it you get issue number one you're like oh that's awesome i want to read issue number two and then it's like Two yeah. years later, three years. So, like, if you if you, you know, if you do the crowdfunding first, and in a couple of years, once you have like four, five, six yeah. issues, you know, then you can just reissue them every couple of months. Yeah, yeah. Make a trade. You know, make a hard cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I I am thinking about stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was talking. Nick and I were talking about you know setting up a website for like a store where you could buy like you know T-shirts and whatever because. I'm making cool logos for every one of the characters that would just look great on, on, on a t-shirt. You know, that's, that's part of the being a superhero. That S is amazing. You know, the Batman symbol mm -hmm. is amazing. The, the Captain Marvel lightning bolt is amazing. The spider, you know, the fantastic. So you, to be a superhero, you got to have a cool name, you got to have a cool costume and you got to have a cool symbol, you know? Yep. It's, uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about marketing, but doesn't that sound crass when you say it like that? You know what I mean? No. Like, no, oh, not at all. I, no, <laughs> not to I, me. <laughs> okay, good. No, well, I used to work in marketing, so um... okay, okay. Because I, I <laughs> am no, thinking but... like, this count, this character would look good from a marketing standpoint. Like I always say, a yeah. simple and elegant design, the least amount of lines. Like I don't, I don't like the uh, the Jim Lee extraneous lines all over Batman's costume. Batman's costume yeah. to me is like it should be a muscular guy in that Adam West costume. You well, even I mean? Jim Lee uh, has said. He regrets drawing all those lines on Batman. Oh, yeah, because now he's got to draw it nine hundred times. Well, he yeah, doesn't yeah, he doesn't draw anymore anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I know what he says. Um, one one thing I'll put out there: underwear. Oh yeah, you, you remember how cool underoos were when we were kids? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. Uh, yeah, how how would I make underwear? Nick, get on that. Yeah. Just I'll, a I'll t-shirt and boxers to the match. If you get on underoos. <laughs> I don't know. I I I I I want pinups, you know. And and here's a cool thing is is I got original art now hanging up in, in my room of, of the black and white, the original drawing by Pat Broderick, the original Michael mm -hmm. T. Gilbert. You know, how how cool is that? You know, you know, they're like, oh, you're gonna sell that? I'm like, I don't want to. It's the cover to my first comic book. I don't want to sell it, but yeah, I wouldn't sell that either. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I know you've got a bunch of streams to do yeah, tonight. I, I, I and, and you got a and a bag of White Castle waiting for you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so White Castle, White Castle. And White Castle uh, fries no longer just come in one size. <laughs> oh, Nick, 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 again, the omniscient ever present Nick X says John is speechless. He doesn't want to admit he's still wearing them. Yes. I'm wearing my. If I had some, underwear. I would too. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Right. Right. Come on. I'm. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I'm the only one wearing Batgirl so, underwear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you got the symbol, and then if you had like the glow in the dark ink, so it was for pajamas. Like that'd be so I, cool. 
I went to Teespring and I made a patriarch hoodie, you know, so I got mm -hmm. a purple hoodie with the, with the, with the laurel wreath on it. You know, I couldn't get the triangle, you know, they, they but that's, you know, so I, I, I like that, but I, I, if anybody has a good t-shirt person that could actually make like, it looks like you're putting on a patriarch. I, I would love that, you know, to, to mm -hmm. wear that, to sell that. Uh, the, the Mary Sue, I don't want to give it away, but I, I'm so proud of this, lo this, this, this symbol that I made for, you know, it's, you know, it, it fits the concept of, of her background so well. I'm ex and I, I I don't want to spoil it. So I just think people are people who aren't even in comic books are going to want this T-shirt, you know, for very cool. So excited. Um, so so <clears throat> uh, if you're watching this on uh, my YouTube channel, then uh, the link is pinned to the top of the chat and it's down in the description. Um, if you're watching this on John's channel, I I'll assume put, put it's it somewhere afterwards. Yeah. All right. It'll be in the description. Uh, and people on X, well, go follow John. Um, my, my Twitter is Zentorian. I'm so embarrassed by this because it was like one of those randomly generated things. Zentorian 2000 at yahoo.com or Zentorian 2000. I just gave you my email. <laughs> and you and you, and you could do that. My my John's long box Twitter got vaporized because I argued with somebody about something, Ooh. but I was too stupid to argue. I, I should have shut my mouth. It's my own fault. All right. And you know, if you haven't subbed to my channel, then come on, guys. Yeah, sub sub show a little love. Yang, Yang Yan Zhao four. And it, one of my favorite people to talk to. All right. So and John. I also want to give a shout out. Master Swag was in the chat. Another guy, I love on being on his channel because it, it's like who would win in a fight, Batman or the thing, and you know, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's all comic book stuff, no drama, just just silly little kid comic book stuff. Who's got a cooler costume, Captain Marvel or Spider Man? You know, I love talking about that stuff. Yeah, he's got a great channel, and yeah, he's like, a lot of fun. It's very surprising how many streams he can put out too. I know, it's amazing. I know, I know, and the guy looks like he's twelve, but he's in his thirties. You know. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. It's it's almost like uh you've had John Hervey on, right? For no, a while. No, you haven't, haven't what? Matter of fact, I just you just contacted me today. So I said I today I got a bunch of streams. Let me check out your stuff and we'll, we'll set something up. So oh yeah. dude, his stuff is amazing. Good. I I you know I, I worked during the day and it, I I've been working a couple of hours overtime, so I literally had no some guy was getting mad at me because I didn't respond. I'm like, I'm sorry. No, no offense, but Saturday and Sunday, I'll respond to everybody. I'll check out all these links, you know, forgive me. Uh, yeah, you would definitely love the Black Tiger Kung Fu series. Oh, that sounds awesome. That sounds it's, awesome. And uh, I think he's still selling the first collection. It's like 176 pages. I think he's wow. charging like 25 bucks for or something. That's awesome. That's awesome. You know, if, if, if you're selling 125 pages for 25 bucks, to me, that tells me that you believe in it, you know, that, you know, yeah. and, and I believe in my comic. I, I really don't want to go, go higher than 10. I, I, I just feel like a comic book is something that a kid should be able to afford. Yeah. And if a kid can't afford it, you're doing something wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. This comic book is designed for adults and kids to, to, to enjoy. So it's, it's gotta be a price that both, that both can, you know, Ideally, it would be a dollar fifty and the price of a Snickers bar, but let's let's we we can't do that, you know. Sadly. Yeah. Uh, so, where are you going to be later tonight? I know you've got at least one more stream. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to be on uh, uh, Argonauts. Uh, Argonauts on Indiegogo is the name of his. Um, I'm going to be on his on a uh, what time is it? Uh, Nine o'clock, and then Frog Tony on the on the Geek Getaway at at, at ten o'clock. Nice. So, I, I scheduled tomorrow. Tomorrow, if anybody wants to have me on and talk, I'll come on. You know, I'm in full on Stan Lee mode right now. True believers, excellent comic book. You're gonna love it. You know. So yes, Marcus, I'm I'm no longer arguing on Twitter. I know he enjoys <laughs> me and my stupid stubbornness, but I can't afford to to lose another Twitter <laughs> account over something meaningless. You know. Uh, the only arguments are Batman cannot beat the thing. I'll fight me. Fight me. No, no. Uh, so yeah, everybody go check out John. And if you're in the mood for some gaming streams, 
I will be on the Dungeon Delvers channel at nine o'clock. We're going to play some classic Gamma World. Uh, the group had uh, just gone to Disney World in the future, which was taken over by murderous robots from the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. We'll see what other shenanigans are in store tonight. Nice. That sounds like fun. All right. So, John, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Everyone in the chats, thanks. Enjoy and, the uh, <laughs> and we'll see you, see you all soon. Thank you for showing up, everybody, and thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. Bye-bye.